And now, let's proceed to our new lesson. I am Mr. Riley Enreyes, your topic instructor in Physiology of Bones and Muscles. This lesson aims to number 1. Familiarize the bones and muscles in human body. Number 2. Classify the types of bones. Number 3. Describe the three types of muscle tissues. Number 4. Identify the muscles located in trunk, upper extremity, and in lower extremity. So don't forget to take notes, your questions, and clarification so after this discussion, you may consult your physical education instructor. So, let's begin! Lesson number 3. It's all about physiology of bones and muscles. So for the first topic, we will be able to discuss about the bones. So saan nga ba gawang ating mga buto? Alam mo ba? Kung ang sagot mo ay oo, magaling. At kung ang sagot mo ay hindi, tara, aralin natin. So, bone is made of collagen which is a protein in a calcium. And calcium is very important to keep our bones strong. Mahalaga ang pagkain ng masusustansyang pagkain na mayaman sa calcium tulad ng broccoli, yogurt, tofu, at iba pa na makakatulong upang mapalakas ang ating mga buto. Pag sinabi namang skeletal, it is the framework of bones o yung structure ng ating katawa na binabalutan ng muscles kaya tayo nakaka-create ng movement or nakakatayo. Bones performs a lot of functions such as support protection, leverage storage, storage for blood cells formation. For movements, bones are easily recognized as levers pulled by the muscles attached to it. Bones are composed of two osseous. We have cancellous bone and a cortical bone. If we say cancellous bone, prosperity for blood is as high as 70% primarily because of its spongy bone. It might be weaker compared to compact bone but because of its prosperity and recovery from injury and nutrients distribution. From the definition itself, also known as a spongy bone. Ang trabaho nito is to allow the movements of minerals and fluids through it. On the other hand, cortical bone referred to as compact bone. As you can see in the picture, it is the outer part of the bone, also known as the main function for the skeletal that provides support, storing the calcium, and storing enough to provide levers of movements. So, kung makakakita tayo ng bones, just for example, sa buto ng baboy, yung makinis na part ng buto ay tinatawag na cortical bone. Yung nasa loob naman na magaspang na parang butas-butas ay tinatawag na cancellous bone. So, let's proceed to types of bones. There are four types of bones according to their shapes and function. We have long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. The first type of bones is the long bones. From its name are basically longer than they are wide. Kung titignan ninyo yung GIF, the long bones is mainly located in the arms and legs at sa bawat end ng long bones is merong joints. Example of long bones in the upper part is the clavicle. Clavicle are also known as the collarbone. The long bones found in arms is the humerus and the ulnar. Long bones found in our hands is metacarpus and phalanges. The lower part, we have femur or thigh bone, tibia, fibula, metatarsus in our foot, and phalanges. The second types of bones is the short bones. These bones are the one found in the fingers, hand, and foot. Short bones is responsible for a little movements, provide support and stability. This, for example, is the carpals, patella, and tarsals. The third types of bones is the flat bones. 
This type is represented by the ribs and acts as protection for the internal organs. Usually thin and sometimes have a curved shape to them, flat bones protected the internal organs like brain and our heart. Example of flat bones is lacrimal, nasal, vomer, frontal, occipital, scapula, sternum, ribs, and hips. The last types of bones is irregular bones. These bones has shape based on their special function. This, for example, is the lumbar vertebra. So before we proceed to next lesson, which is the muscles, I want you to get a piece of clean paper to answer my two questions. I am giving you three minutes to answer that. Number one, what are the function of bones and muscles in human body? Number two, how important to have a knowledge about this lesson? All right, now let's proceed to next topic. So, ano nga ba yung muscle? Muscle is responsible for movements. That's the main reason kung bakit tayo nakakatayo, nakakapaglakad, at nakakatakbo. Muscles is the most active tissue in human body, controlled by the voluntary and involuntary muscles. Okay, pag-usapan naman na natin yung voluntary at yung involuntary muscles. Some muscles we can enhance or control tulad ng nasa arms and legs. And that muscles are called as voluntary muscles. And they can move o sumunod sa kung anong gusto natin gawin. While the other muscles, like heart, ay tinatawag namang involuntary muscles na kayang gumana ng mag-isa. So yung puso natin is made of muscles na nagpapump ng blood sa veins. At yung puso natin ay nagbibit kapag tayo ay gising or natutulog. And it pumps and beats between 70 to 100 beats per minutes. Ikaw, nararamdaman mo ba or naririnig mo ba ang pintig ng iyong puso? Kung ang sagot mo ay oo, maganda yan. Pero kung ang sagot mo ay hindi, kailangan mo nang magpatingin sa iyong doktor. There are three known types of muscle tissues, which are cardiac muscle, smooth muscles, and skeletal muscles. Cardiac muscle are the straighted type found in human heart and called as myocardium. Cardiac muscle is involuntary muscle. Next, smooth muscle are also specialized type found in internal organs and non-striated unlike myocardium. Smooth muscle is involuntary muscle. Skeletal muscle are the type of muscles that are voluntary and attach the bones through tendons. This muscle is responsible for strength. The type of muscle are made up of muscle cells and also known as fibers na magkakasama. There are bundles of fibers receive signal from nervous system na mag-contract at makagawa ng force, movement, or ng muscle contraction. So, we are going to familiarize kung ano-ano ba yung mga muscles na makikita sa ating trunk. The muscle are considered as a foundation of forces produced by distal segment or the extremities. The number one is the pectoralis major. Pakihawakan nga ang muscle sa ating chest. This big muscle located at the chest, it is responsible for moving the arm from sideward to forward position. Pakigalaw nga ang ating mga kamay from sideward to forward position. Nararamdaman ba ang inyong pectoralis major? Magaling. Next. Trapecius. This big muscle is responsible for pulling your shoulder back and pulling your chest out prominently. Pakihawakan nga ang inyong trapecius. Magaling. Next. Latissimus dorsi. This big muscle found at the back responsible to rotate the inward arm used in baseball style of throwing. So kung nakikita ninyo sa picture, kung ano yung muscle na nakalagay dyan, ay yun yung tinutukoy. Next. Four. 
rectus abdominis. This muscle known as the abs or the abdominal muscle. The, it is responsible for curling your trunk forward. It is also pulling the arm down back to the side. So, ayun yung tinatawag nating pandesal. Next, erector spinae. This group of muscle are found and attached to the spinal column, maintaining one's upright position even in sitting. It also responsible for trunk hyperextension or bending towards the back. Next, oblique. This muscle is found at the same side of the rectus abdominis or yung muscle na nakalagay sa gilid ng inyong abs. After discussing the muscles located in the trunk, let's proceed to the muscles of the upper extremity. From the core muscles, upper extremity muscles are more distal in terms of location. Generally, upper extremity muscles have greater concentration of fast twitch muscles compared to the trunk muscles. Here are some examples of the muscles in the upper limb. Number one, brachialis. This is found in the frontal area of the elbow and it responsible for bending. Number two, biceps brachii. This muscle is famously known as the biceps and recognized as responsible for bending the elbow. Third, triceps brachii. While the biceps are found in the front side, the triceps brachii is located at the back side of the arm. Next, Number four, supinator. This is found at the side of the elbow. Its primary role is to pull the radius, making your palm facing up from a facing down position. Number five, pronator quadratus. This muscle is spirally wrapping near the wrist area, responsible for facing the palm down from the face up position. Number six, flexor carpi ulnaris and radials. These two muscles controlled by two different nerves are responsible for helping the palmaris longus in bending the hand down, facing down position. Number seven, extensor carpi radialis brevis and longus. This pair of muscles are moving in one control and responsible for bending the hand up from palms facing down position. Number eight, opponent's policies. This muscle found in the hand is responsible for moving the thumb towards the finger of the hands. So as you can see in GIF, lahat ng muscles na nakikita nyo dyan is ayun yung tinutukoy ko. All right. After discussing the muscles located in trunk, in the upper extremity, now let's proceed to the muscles of the lower extremity. Lower extremities are composed of two muscles that carry most of the individual's weight in activities. Here are some of the most prominent lower extremity muscle. Adductor brevis. This muscle is found in the inner tight and works to pull the leg in or towards the center. Next. Gluteus maximus and minimus. These two muscles are controlled by the same set of nerves that is responsible for lifting the whole leg to the side. Next, gluteus maximus. This is famously called as the butt muscle. Gluteus minimus is one of the big muscles of the lower limb. It primarily works to lift the legs toward the back. It also helps in rotating the leg towards the side. Next, iliasus. This muscle is responsible for lifting the leg or tight in the front. Next, 
psoas. This muscle helps the ilkalus in lifting the tight in front. Connecting the spinal bone, this muscle is responsible for back pain when doing the sit-ups. Rectus femoris. This muscle is located in front of tight segment. Biceps femoris. On the other side of rectus femoris, this muscle found at the back part of tight is responsible for strengthening the legs both from hips and knees. Next, gastronomus. This muscle is famously known as calves, located at the back part of lower leg. The last one is tibialis anterior. This muscle is found in front of the lower leg. And that's the end of my presentation. By using your body, there is a lot of muscles and bones working together for us to create a movement. By maintaining a good health, the heart rates will help us to become active. So thank you for listening. I hope that you get a lot of knowledge and ideas about bones and muscles. So if you have questions and clarifications, don't hesitate to ask your physical education instructor.